Howdy, hacksters! Welcome to Friday and another unboxing. Uh, this one is extremely exciting for me. I've been eyeing it for over a year now, especially since I started getting into making my own PCBs. So we're gonna open this up, and obviously the title kind of gives it away, but I won't tell you just yet. <laughs> here we go. What have we here? Actually, there is a bunch of things in here. Uh, it's a whole sort of bunch of stuff from Adafruit, but. This. this is a dream, uh, presumably, we'll find out, for people who are uh, doing PCB design. It is a mini hot plate, and I'm not sure why my contrast is freaking out. Sorry about that. <sighs> but uh, it's Friday. Let's get this open. This is a USB-C powered device um, that basically is like you know, using a regular hot plate. I've used a hot skillet that I just got from, you know, Target or something before, but it was a huge pain, uh, partly because, you know, it's hard to work on part of the PCB without uh, dislodging things in the other areas sometimes. And also, especially if you're working with hot air, um, I was never quite able to get the results that I wanted. Plus it's huge. It's like this big. And this guy fits in this box. And it is designed... Oh my gosh! It's even smaller than I thought! Oh my gosh! Oh, you're so tiny! I thought this was going to be like a couple inches square. Oh! It's so darling! Oh man, look at that! It's got a little silicone cover for it too. Oh my gosh! Okay. <sighs> It has mysterious A and B buttons on it on the back uh, around the USB-C connector. Look how pretty. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a close-up of this. But first, let's check out what else is in here. We've got a cable and an adapter and these little labeled boxes that have an unusual way of opening along the side. Uh, you can actually, like, well, they're perforated, so ideally you could just rip them open. But um, as with many such designs... I don't know why people do these little perforated tabs that you're supposed to... Ooh, it's very rubbery. Uh, very flexible silicone. That's nice. Ah, this is a really nice USB-C cable. It may or may not have data, um, so maybe not good for other things, but very solid. Also very stylish. It feels like quality. Um, wow! Oh, chunky! This is a very chunky uh, adapter. Now, let's see. This is not the one for the US, but my assumption is that since they're selling it through Adafruit, there are uh, you know, ways to make this. Children shall not play with the appliance, etc. This appliance can be used by children from age from eight years and above and persons with reduced physical, sensory, or mental capabilities or lack of experience and knowledge if they've been given supervision or instruction concerning use of the appliance in a safe way and understand the hazards involved. Okay, there's some little instructions here in the adapter thing. This side is in Chinese. This side is in German. Oh, here's some English. Um, oh, uh, okay. So we have like Chinese first and then English uh, and then German, sort of all in a stream of consciousness here. Safety instructions. For the first time, it may when you heat it, it may generate a light smoke and steam due to the heating of heating elements. This is a normal phenomenon. Do, 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 do. <laughs> when it is heated, do not touch the hot plate to avoid being burnt. Good to know. Um. <laughs> okay, not much about the adapter here. But it does say, oh, okay, it has firmware, and you can upgrade the firmware. So to do that, you hold button A and connect uh, the MHP30, Mini Hot Plate 30, through your PC with a USB Type-C data cable, and enter DFU mode. Okay, cool. And then you have to copy the hex firmware to the root directory of the disk. I guess it shows up as a flash drive. Let's see, in DFU mode. Cool. Um, so in standby mode, short press button A to start heating. I'm gonna switch you to the other camera because that's gonna make more sense here. Mm -mm -mm. 
So, hmm, we've also got some strange coloring going on here, but we'll roll with it. There we go. Here are our instructions. I'm looking at this heating area, temperature range, all this good information. This is the safety instructions I just read to you. And here is the diagram with the buttons and interface. Heating part, stainless steel insulation bracket, controller, OLED screen, plug pins. Oh, it just lifts off. Wow. Supporting feet. Um, it's kind of cool that it has a modular design. That might mean that it uh, maybe has to do with, uh, that maybe it's modular and might make it more repairable. That's cool. Um, it would be very cool if you're like, uh, mini hot plate itself was repairable because one of the reasons that I want to use this is for repair. I, like many others, have um, you know toasted a few Raspberry Pis and such in my time, and I think it would be really cool to be able to fix them instead of uh, just throwing them away. I'm gonna fix our focus. Um, I appreciate your patience with this focus situation. It's a a new camera setup. And it doesn't seem to like me very much, if I'm honest. Oh my goodness. There we go. Cool. So uh, <laughs> there is a uh, comment here from Andreas says, thought it is a hackster here. Which hackster needs to read a manual? Well, have you ever heard the phrase RTFM? Like, it is actually a rather pro thing to read the manual. This is an extremely simple manual. I'm not saying that like I'm a pro because I read this manual, but um, you know, pros read manuals. That's sort of how you learn stuff. <laughs> if you're having a problem with something, maybe you'll know how to fix it because you read the manual. Uh, that's sort of step one of a lot of troubleshooting. You know, read the data sheet, read the manual. Uh, so that is my reaction to that comment. <laughs> of course, you read the manual. Um, also, that's how you avoid messing up your beautiful new little tiny hot plate by misusing it or whatever. It's also how you learn what the A and B buttons are for. It's a good thing for curious people to do. So these are just some assorted PCBs. Uh, I wanted to visually illustrate how I've gotten really into making PCBs this year. And this one in particular is a guitar pick PCB slash earring slash key fob or whatever that I made for uh, Avnet's 100 year anniversary. And uh, it fits almost precisely on here. It's all service mount parts. Uh, and so that would actually make my soldering much, much faster, especially if I got a little stencil from here. You can get, this is a PCB made by Osh Park, and you can get, um, simultaneously, you can order stencils from Osh Stencils. And uh, that would be a great way to make it easy to produce a ton of these, which I do want to do because I think that it's a, it's a cool little PCB produces some backlight, backlighting and stuff. Okay, let's take a look at the website for this. Ooh, some feedback. Akbar says, uh, I have this hot plate when it first came out. Unfortunately, I've not used it. It's just staring back at me on my work desk since early this year. Well, maybe hopefully soon you will have um, more excuses to do that. Have you ever made your own PCBs? That would be super cool. I'd probably make a mini waffle with this hot plate. It would be cute. So, here is the product page from Adafruit. Um, they usually involve include a lot of useful information here. Um, heating area, 30 minimum. You know, if I'd read this, <laughs> it's only three by three centimeters. Um, I wouldn't have been so surprised, but I'm pleasantly surprised, honestly, because I think it's really cool. It's, it's just, it is going to fit in with my workflow so well because it's so tiny. You know what? I've even just noticed that there's a threaded rod onto the bottom of this, which looks like you could fix it down to a surface or even put it on like a bendy thing if you want it. I'll show you in a second. But first, let's take a look at this product page because um, one of the cool things here is that, well, A, they show you the interface, but B, they tell you this is related to the TS100 and TS80 screw or soldering irons, which have become very popular. I've been ogling this one. I actually have the older version, which plugs directly into an adapter that goes into a wall wart. And that has been a huge help on lots of trips because it's so compact and it heats up really fast and cools down really fast. Um, this is the uh, better version of that, which is USB-C powered. So you don't even have to worry about what adapter to bring somewhere. You could just power it off of 
uh, you know, most I think in the EU they're now requiring every phone to have a USB C uh, a, um, port on it, and so you'd be able to power it off of that same charger. Or you know, my computer also takes USB C, etc. And you would be, you wouldn't even have to worry about uh, voltages and stuff when you travel. And it's so compact, ah, oh, so good. It even breaks in half, or you know, comes in half. Look at that, it's a TRS socket. That's incredible. So this is made by the same company, basically, and they also make this motion control screwdriver. Um, great for people who can't uh, do a lot of uh, fine motor stuff, and also, you know, if you're just <laughs> doing a ton of screwdriving and you don't want to mess up your muscles or whatever. They compare it to the sonic screwdriver ha huh. and then also this thing which i hadn't seen before which is mini digital tweezers uh which will help you identify components and their values and their voltages and stuff which also looks very cool uh, they're a little spendy but uh honestly i think this is a great um run of again i have the earlier model of this but i think i paid like $80 for it or something. And it's absolutely worth it for traveling and stuff. Um, I even used it as my main soldering iron for a while when uh, the tip on my old one, which was terrible and janky and heated up really slowly. And the, finally the tip got corroded away and I was too lazy to replace it. Instead, I gave it away. So uh, lots of other things made by this miniware company. And uh, it's just, it just really is incredibly small. Um, it says, well, you could have a full-blown hot air rework station. This little preheater is a fast and portable option. It takes approximately 150 seconds to go from room temperature to 300 degrees Celsius. The mini tower shape controller comes with an OLED display and two A and B buttons on the back, etc. You can read this for yourself. Um, you do need USB-C high current, high voltage power supply with US plugs. Uh, so there's an EU plug adapter. As I suspected, this um, plug that's on here looks like it is sort of a glommed on thing. Like it's kind of attached on top. And let me show you again. Whoop, here we go. So look at this. This is clearly like not actually a part of it. And my only question is like, does it rotate out or does it slide out? Because I don't want to mess it up. Let me try sliding first. There we go. Okay, cool. It just slides out. Um... Look at that, it like slots onto those. And then there we have the US version. Even better for traveling, oh my gosh. I'm just swiftly falling in love with all the stuff that this company produces. I only have this um, heater and the soldering iron, but uh, they're very, 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 very good. And the soldering iron has worked very well for me over a long period of, t period of time. So I have good hopes for this one. Um, one thing I do want to get to uh, with it is this Ashwi badge from the uh, our community member, Gustavo Reynaga, one of our ambassadors, created this. Uh, it's like an octopus badge, and it does have stencils. There's uh, one side with the LEDs and stuff, and then it's another side with the ESP. Is it an 8266 or a 32? I think it's an 8266. Yeah, SMT module. And this is one of the first things that I think I want to put together with this, because I tried doing it with a hot plate before, like a full-size one, and it just, you know, the hot plate took ages to heat up that was one of the main problems is that like it takes so long for a skillet to heat up plus then you have this huge skillet that is taking up a bunch of space and you can't use it for food anymore because um <laughs> lead and toxicity even if you're using like lead free solder of some type there's still like you know you don't want to use that for food anymore so uh, I'm looking forward to putting this together. I could heat up just a part of it at the time, at a time, like this ESP8266 part. Um, use these stencils that came with it. Uh, again, from Osh stencils. And uh, yeah, put this whole thing together. I'm not going to do it today because it is a holiday time and I'm going to go uh, do holiday things. But that's a plan. And I also wanted to give you a quick sneak peek of another thing that I've been working on. Oh, there's interesting stuff uh, going on in the comments here. Hmm. They are products by Miniware. They seem to be a really cool company. I use USB PD power banks with most of my tools. 20 volts, 5, 20 volts, 5 amps max. Wow. From a power bank? Dang. Um, oh, and apparently there's an uh, alternative to the TS-80P, which is that um, soldering iron that I showed you this guy um called the pine sill i'll have to check that out pine sill 
this smart portable mini soldering iron. Oh, look at that. Go to store. How much is this? Replaceable plastic housing, removable tips. $24.99. Dang. All right. Well, if you're interested, uh, you know, you could go take a look at this USB-C powered soldering iron. You could go take a look at this pine sill. Thank you for uh, the mention, Christoph. And we will I'll take a look at that later. Anyone who's debating on it, that's another option for you. Super cool. So let me um, you know, switch you back to this view for a second. You can take a look at some of these PCBs I've made over the last year. They're just a visual aid to be like, hey, I've been up to a lot of this stuff. And uh, you might enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I plan to do lots more PCB stuff in the new year. Speaking of which, check it out. Um, this is my new PCB that I'm making for Hackster for 2022, just like a, a nice 22, 2022 PCB. Um, you can't really see the whole design. I'm not gonna show you everything about it because we're gonna unbox it, hopefully. Hopefully next week, um, we're gonna put one of these together. And it's a simple little blinky. It would work as an ornament. I came through the gate a little late for that this year, but um, it does uh, reflect our goal of sustainability um, for the new year, which, you know, on the one hand, making a PCB is not the most sustainable thing in the world, especially if you don't have to. But um, the idea with this is that you'll be able to use it for a bunch of different things. So even if, for example, the uh, PCB doesn't work for some reason in the, its first iteration, or if uh, you break it somehow, or if you don't have the right types of uh, components to put it together, you'll still be able to use it for things like a chip clip or holding a razor knife, which is my terrible idea. You probably shouldn't do that because it's not very safe, but I think it would look cool. <laughs> I want to prototype the idea, um, basically inspired by this little knife that I have and all kinds of other uh, applications that are, for example, like a book light. You could use this for a paper clip um, or bookmark or book lights. It's going to be a 0.6 height PCB, 0.6 millimeters. So it'll be very thin and also flexible. So basically this is a uh, the new project that I'm working up for 2022, uh, and I'm looking forward to using this mini hot plate on it. Stay tuned for that design. I think it's going to be pretty cool, and you'll be able to use it for lo lots of different things, even if it doesn't work for um, for you as a Blinky. You know, there's always prototyping issues, um, even though this is a tested circuit that I've done before. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Tariq. It's been really cool having a bunch of you show up again and again in the comments over the year. And uh, especially during our Hackster Cafe sessions on Tuesdays, uh, there's some people who just keep coming back. And it's so cool to see you show up uh, week after week, Tariq. Uh, I really hope that you have an awesome holiday season as well. Uh, so good. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, really excited about this little thing. It's just my pleasure and honor to keep talking with you um, every week. And it really lights up my weeks. And I really love that our new format here allows me to see your comments in real time and actually have a dialogue. I think it's so cool. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here with us and have a wonderful season. I hope you're, you stay safe and warm and uh, hack on. <laughs>